the thing I love to see the most when I, you know, see new content is that it's short and sweet and digestible. Because in a lot of cases, you know, our, especially like our, we have great part-time outfitters who once they, they clock out, they're going back to school or back to, to parenting or back to their other, you know, full-time job. And this is their fun job that they do on the side. And we understand they don't have a ton of time to devote to product training. And so if they can, they have a couple of down minutes in the store and they can log into Miyagi, watch a quick three minute video, get some new knowledge and take it back with them onto the sales floor. That's huge. And so short form is definitely, we kind of like with our internal content, we kind of have a rule of thumb. We never make anything longer than three minutes, or we try very hard not to make anything longer than three minutes because that's just, we're, we're going to start losing people at that point. And it's not, it's not user-friendly to them. Mm -hmm. So um, love to see shorter content, love to see consistent content. I think mm -hmm. when, um, when our outfitters know the things that they're going to regularly hear from a brand, then they know they can trust that they're going to, what they're going to get from the brand. Um, and so I, you know, I track engagement for everything that our outfitters are watching and it's really interesting. You know, the, the brands that post frequently at least once a month and, you know, once a month, and then maybe a reminder notification that they posted new content are the brands that are getting the most engagement because I think the outfitters just trust that what they're going to see is something that they know and something that's good and something that they can use. And so establishing that consistency, I think is really, really important. Yeah, no, I can a hundred percent see that. And I suppose um, when we think about the types of content that you see, we've got that kind of foundation of, of product knowledge definitely agree with you short form content we're almost um sort of not stating the obvious but we're talking a lot about watching so predominantly i'm guessing you're seeing video content as the kind of major form now is there still a place for you for other forms of content as well and and if so what's the kind of use case and and how you guys are using it primarily video for what we're using um i do i love to see as a reinforcement tool miyagi has the the flip cards so flashcard uh digital flashcards can come up cuz i think that's a great way to to reinforce some of the the content in the videos um and then some some brands are great about putting up like product tech sheets that can be easily downloaded um printed put in the back room of the store you know, saved to somebody's phone so they can go back and look at them later. Uh, and so it's it's mostly video driven, but it's nice to have those other modalities for, um, you know, depending on the learner, depending on what works best for them. Yeah, absolutely. And and you talked there about sort of higher levels of engagement. And obviously you watch a lot of, if not all of the brand content that gets uh, sent through. You must be a busy person getting through all that. <laughs> um but I'm interested to know, you know, the brands that are providing, you know, what you deem to be more engaging content. And we'll talk in a second about what, what that would include. But are you seeing that very obviously play out in the sort of engagement? Is it kind of, I suppose, uh, there's, there's some free will on behalf of the, the outfitters. They can kind of, to some extent, choose what they watch. And are they gravitating towards those that are perhaps being more intentional with their content? Oh, 100%. I mean, if the, they gravitate, gravitate towards the brands that are posting frequently that have fun, something fun in their content, whether, you know, I, I'm thinking of one in particular that had uh, their dog, you know, it was somebody giving a, a review of a new shoe and had their dog with them. And that, you know, that's cute and fun and memorable for, for an outfitter. And that's a brand that also is consistent in their posting and is consistent in their messaging. And so I think that that all paired together goes a long way. And then we find that really content, content drives content. So if I'm posting a lot of things and our team is posting a lot of things, I see brand content be elevated. They're going to be in uh, watching our content and spend more time, you know, while I'm in here, I'm going to go watch something else. Mm -hmm. Likewise, when I see brands, you know, especially when a lot of new shoes are dropping, there's a lot of new content. When I see 
that even though you know those go those numbers go up even if we haven't been posting a ton of new content we post at least one new video a week but i see our you know our engagement go up so it really kind of once people start watching they tend to continue watching but um it's it's clear what engages them and what grabs them first yeah no I, it's really interesting that you see that in the data and probably also the oh, yeah. the anecdotal feedback i'm sure you hear outfitters talk about did you see that video and and, mm -hmm. and that's which is really cool.